Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. If you own your own darkroom or your own art studio, you will probably agree that it's a lifetime project. There is always something to add or something to fix. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. I will try to build a thing or two, plus I will uh, fix and take you through my darkroom ventilation system. At the end of the video, I also have an announcement to make, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, without further ado, let's roll the video. I will start off by building a small table on the left side of my darkroom right here around 70 to 80 centimeters long it's gonna become a dedicated place for my 3d printer which is currently on the right hand side I would love to have more place on this uh, desk here to coat and uh, dry dry plates so yeah I would like to move this one on the other side before that the 3d printer was located in the light part of my darkroom of my container which was in this corner here but it was way too noisy so I've decided to move it inside here I will use this scrap piece of kitchen counter right here and then I have to build some legs to support it on the right side here and on the left I will screw these supports on the wall and they're gonna support the, the table up and um, secure it in place so yeah let's start building This frame is just a temporary solution, so I'm making it out of a uh, scrap wood. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me making more videos like this. Frame is done, time to cut the counter. I'm helping myself with some masking tape to get a smoother cut. There you go guys, my desk is ready as well, so now I just have to put everything together. Now I will turn this assembly around and install these metal supports on the black wall behind there and I will help myself with this um, leveling scale. Whew, there you go guys, small little bench is finished. So now I can move my 3D printer on this side and um, what I would like to do in the future is remove these temporary legs here and build a cabinet that's gonna hold my fridge, my refrigerator which is currently in the light part of the container storing all my chemicals and emulsions and so on 
and then on top of that I would like to build drawers that are gonna hold my paper for printing. Like I said at the beginning of the video I also have to fix my ventilation system in the dark room. Let me show it to you. There are obviously some parts missing here because I've installed my ventilation before my sink was in place so some parts just don't fit together anymore. This is an inline fan right here that pulls out the air out of the dark room. I will go into more details uh, later when I fix all this. And you can see from down here there are some parts missing like this uh, black pipe right here and this adapter that gets attached to here. And uh, also the second part of this pipe doesn't fit anymore. It should go on top like this. I have to cut this one off a bit and move all this a little bit more to the right so that uh, this adapter can fit on and go straight up into the inline fan. Ventilation is an essential part of every darkroom. I'm working with all kinds of chemicals that arrive either in liquid or powder form and can be suspended into the air very easily. For example, when working with autochromes and dyeing starch into three different colors, these small tiny starch particles can get uh, lifted up into the air and if the room is not ventilated properly I will be ending up with a rainbow snot in a matter of minutes which is really not good. This square black pipe right here is screwed to the supports like this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the screws or not. Yeah, they're inside there. The problem is that this sink is firmly in place. As you can see here, it fits perfectly to both sides of the container. And also there are pipes connected um, to these uh, faucets right here. So the only thing to reach the screw is from behind. That's why I've removed everything from this shelf right here. And I will try to unscrew them from underneath here. see besides using the screws right here I also used both sided tape on the edge of the sink okay so this is somewhat square right now and um, I have to cut this one a little bit now as you can see here there you go it fits perfectly I will combine these two pipes in the middle here with some duct tape but in the future I will 3d print an adapter to lock them together Now that I've cut and glued everything, I will um, firmly attach this back on. I will again help myself with some uh, both sided tape and um, some screws from the back. screws but it's enough they're gonna just bite into the plastic and um, hold the, the pipe down time to crawl underneath once again let's go
Whew, that was a crazy workout. This horizontal pipe is now in place. It's quite sturdy after I screwed it down. It's obviously not perfect, but I think it's the best that I could do for now. It's made out of plastic, so it's twisted in all kinds of ways. So maybe one day I could um, install one made out of met sheet metal or something. So now I have to install this adapter on the right side here and um, connect this vertical pipe to the inline fan and then we're done. I've glued some um, foam on the inside of the pipes to prevent the air from escaping. We'll have to put these two together first, like this and then There you go guys, now that I've installed all the pipes, I will take you through my ventilation system, so let's go. First I constantly use an AC in the light part of the container to ventilate the air, keeping me warm in the winter and cool in the summer. I try to constantly keep both rooms at 22 degrees Celsius. I build this black thing right here to catch the air coming from the AC. It has built-in uh, compartments to stop all the light from coming inside and on the other side of this wall there are two bathroom fans installed that are pushing in the fresh air and keep the dark room warm. If I would close the door like this uh, and turn the fans off, the temperature could easily drop well below zero now in winter time. These two fans are connected to the switch right here. I still had to add a mask to these two to hide them a bit. Moving on we get to this switch right here that turns on the inline fan which is installed right behind there. It pushes all the, it sucks in all the fumes from the sink and pushes them out. I can also control the speed here but I mostly keep it full power all the time. I will turn it off now. I decided for an inline fan because they are small and quiet, around 35 decibels only and can create a big airflow for their size. Model I'm using is uh, Vortis Linea 100Q that costs around 80 euros here in Slovenia and can pull out up to 200 cubic meters per hour. My whole dark room here has around 18 square meters meaning that the whole air inside this room can change 10 times in an hour. With this uh, setup of pipes right here the fumes that are formed in the trays while I'm developing in the sink are pulled into these holes right here before they reach my face, which is really important. Guys, before you go, I'd like to share something with you. If you've been watching my videos, you probably know that I've been shooting and coating my own glass dry plates for the last few years exclusively and uh, really trying hard to spread the knowledge of uh, this beautiful but almost forgotten photographic technique Today I'm super happy to announce that I'm making dry plates available to everyone. This is a box of uh, 10 4x5 hand coated glass dry plates that are uh, made to order and if you'd like to try them out they're available for purchase in my uh, Etsy store which is linked down below. I would like to thank everyone for watching and uh, see you guys next time. Bye!